Hi there, this is DJ from Garage from .NET Academy and in this tutorial I will be explaining my workflow and some basic ideas about art directing the Holiday Cabin project. We have formed a team of 3D artists working online and collaborating on this and my role as an art director was to have the basic idea and the vision where the project is going, gather some visual inspirations and select the best visual path to sell the idea of the project and to inspire all the other artists to blend their parts into that vision to meet our goal which is the final image. And a great tool for that is a mood board, a bunch of inspirations gathered together, forming a nice, clear visual idea on where you are going. It helps you break down the whole project into small pieces and ask yourself the important questions, why you wanna do something this specific way, what elements should the scene contain and why. I hope this tutorial can give you some inspiration and some insights on the workflow as we approached it and you can have something out of it for your own project. So the basic idea behind the project was to create a nice exterior scene using a pre-made design of a cabin that we as a team received from the client, which is a imaginary architect who has already designed the cabin the input data was the basic constraint of the design and the idea behind the design of the cabin, which we are trying to sell with an image that tells the story and sells the design idea to the potential buyer, which is most of the time the goal of any ArcVis project. Whether it's a simple house project or a big real estate, you as an ArcVis artist have the goal to sell some idea, emotions behind the project and perhaps some important features of the architecture itself. So the cabin that we received was pretty simple and modern with a nice big window, probably designed this way because of the view that surrounds the cabin. We weren't constrained by any specific location by the architect. So it was our goal to pick the right surroundings for the cabin. The cabin was covered with wood. So we thought about the cabin in the woods. And the functional idea behind the cabin was that it was designed for a couple with two children for family vacation purposes. It's a very universal design. It could fit into any possible exterior. But because this was designed for a family, the environment shouldn't be too extreme. And the environment had to be all about leisure activities. Now it was finally time to do some image searching. It's always good to find out what was done before you and to get some inspiration. Not to straight copy that, but just to gain some ideas on where the project could lead to. And here's some images that I found online. And looking at those images, I would just try to answer myself what's there that I like about the images and try to extract the basic principles and ideas behind the images to implement them into my images. And from that whole research, I found that the answer for our project will be a mountain lake, but not in a very high mountainy landscape because of the kids something good for hiking or canoeing. So with all that inspiration gathered, I needed to search for a real world location where I could find all these features that I was looking for. I checked Swiss Alps, I checked Canada, I checked Tyrol, and there was something about these misty sunrises that finally led me to England. I found Lake District to be very compelling and pretty accessible for a family walk in the mountains. And once I saw the views, I was immediately sold. So I picked Wasdale in the Lake District. I gathered some photos and quickly made the mood boards. To give the other team members a nice dose of inspiration, I decided to create four mood boards covering four crucial elements of the environment that we were going to build. The first one was the landscape features. I called it landmarks. So I gathered some photos from the location I picked and I try to focus on the elements that make the location unique and inspiring. And just a bare landscape without any plants or animal might seem a little bit deserted. So I also gathered inspiration photos for the living elements in the environment. The pines, the birds, squirrels and the sheep. I was a bit unsure whether we should make it a sunny summer environment or a nice colorful autumn environment. In the end, we leaned towards the summer. It seems like more proper for vacation cabin. But I already gathered some inspiration that I wanted to include some mist, sun and the lighting scenarios that made the mountain landscape look really beautiful and stunning, which was what we wanted for our cabin project. Last but not least, telling the story about the vacation cabin would be lacking without leisure activities. 
such as canoeing, biking, gliding or hiking in the mountains. So I gathered some inspiration photo on that topic as well for the fourth mood board. Once I had these image collages prepared, I just sent them over to the other members of the team. Because for visual artists like us, images speak louder than words. I wanted to prepare something more than just the mood board for the rendering artist to proceed. So I created the basic landscape mesh uh, using the Blender GIS add-on, which I cover in a different tutorial, you can watch it as well. Blender is a great tool for concepting, so I quickly started out the basic layout of the scene in Blender using its scattering tool to just lay out the trees or at least block out the elements to see how the environment could look and to give a basic idea of what I'm expecting and to give some directions and suggestions to Tom who will be doing the final setup in 3ds Max. The other team members were already preparing some assets based on the mood boards that I created so I could import those assets into my scene and just play around with them and see how it works to create the mood and the scene that I'm aiming for. So I basically laid out the trees, made a small path and because I already knew what kind of leisure activities I wanted to convey, I could also search for or prepare my own assets for a canoe or a pier that was needed for making the scene tell the story of the vacation location sensation. So once I had my basic block out of the scene created, all I needed to do was to transfer the files to Tom and because he's using 3ds Max and me Blender, I needed to export that and I found that the working solution was FBX exporter. Of course, it's not a perfect solution for every aspect, but I just needed to export simple geometry. I was just trying to give Tom hints of where to put the scatters in 3ds Max so that he can scatter the grass and all the other environmental elements inside 3ds Max using tools such as Forest Pack. And I also rendered out some almost ready-made shots using Blender's internal tools such as Grass World for Grass just to give a hint of what I'm expecting of the renders. They were not final, that was just to give additional guidelines, the guidelines not rules. to the rendering artists. But I think what's important in the teamwork is just to leave some space for creativity of the artist that's doing the final render and just give constructive feedback once I receive the renders from Tom. And these are the images that I got as the work in progress renders. They were already pretty good but sometimes a fresh pair of eyes really helps to improve your results. I was still lacking the mist in the shots. Luckily, Tom rendered out all the necessary passes, so I could easily make some quick adjustments in post-production using Affinity Photo. I just quickly adjusted some colors just to make the aerial perspective a little bit more pronounced. I added a bit of mist here and there and some animal overlays just to add some more life into the images. And I sent them over to Tom as suggestions to push the images a little bit further. Now all is in the hands of the team. I just need to patiently wait for the results. That was fast. I'm sure that Tom's hardware is not that fast. He must have used the render farm. And here is the final render. I'm pretty satisfied. It was quite a big experiment for us, like working in a team totally remotely and communicating just via internet. We had our ups and downs, but finally we achieved what we wanted. And it seems like losing different tools in the pipeline produces some problems, but nothing you can really overcome.